Paul Workman is standing by for us in the capital, Kiev. Paul, good to see you. You and I were talking about this as, as those images were coming out yesterday. You've now just returned from visiting Bucha. Describe to us what you saw. Well, I didn't quite get to Bucha. I was taken on a military tour this morning to the Hostomel Airport, which is one of the first places the Russians landed at the beginning of their invasion in the early hours. They tried to take over that airport and use it as a landing uh, zone uh, to be able to move towards Kyiv, the city just behind me here. They were never able to do that. The defense forces of Ukraine were able to stop them. The airport, the runway at Hostomel, they were never, the Russians were never able to use that in, to in fact attack Ukraine, perhaps some helicopters, but not any aircraft coming in to reinforce uh, their people on the ground. So that is in some ways where the battle for Kyiv stopped very abruptly at the beginning of the war. At the same time, the largest airplane in the world, largest air aircraft in the world, an Antonov, uh, was uh, the sort of the pride, the aviation pride of Ukraine was destroyed in that early fighting, and the relic of it is still sitting at the airport where I was this morning. Yeah, so much destruction that uh, that you've witnessed, that we've been seeing. Uh, President Volodymyr Zelensky certainly reacting to all of this. Um, what has he been saying? Well, the Ukrainians are trying to press a case for genocide mm -hmm. after what they've seen and what's happened in the towns and the villages just outside of Kiev. As you said, there were there seems to be evidence of executions. Uh, mass graves, uh, people being tortured, killed with their hands and legs bound. And that, of course, will all now be used, to, uh, be used to, uh, in their efforts to gather evidence to present a case to the International Criminal Court. Very probably hard and difficult to prosecute. You know, uh, uh, genocide is about exterminating a particular ethnic group or uh, a people. And that's what the Ukrainians are now going to have to do if they want to be able to make some prosecutions. And who do they name in these prosecutions? Mm -hmm. They'll have to do autopsies in all of these bodies. They'll have to um, exhume a lot of the bodies in, in these graves. And then they'll have to gather testimony from people in the villages in order to press their case before the court. Yeah, absolutely. And with all of that, because, I mean, it's a very long, tedious, very difficult process here. With it, that we're also getting reaction from the international community who are also saying that we're they're going to hold Russia to account on this. There seems to be a great deal of support uh, and a lot of shock and a lot of uh, very a lot of outrage about what we're seeing in these villages. And it's coming from a lot of the leaders in the country. Canada's Prime Minister and the French President. And so there is that sort of gathering of, of support for Ukraine pressing ahead with um, pressing ahead with their accusations of war crimes. At the same time, we're hearing today that the Europeans are now looking at perhaps bringing in stronger sanctions. Mm -hmm. What they're seeing on the ground here has pushed them towards that point, I think probably directed towards the oil and gas industry in Russia more than anything. So we may see that coming out of Europe in the coming days. Yeah, exactly. We've been hearing that from the EU leaders, uh, UK responding to this, Germany as well. Paul, thank you so much for the update today. CTV's international right. correspondent Paul Workman for us in, uh, in, in Kiev for us today.